the integral from? You are recording, right? Yes, okay. I just started again. Thank you. First of all, is this function uh, continuous between negative 5 or 3 and 5 or 3? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. x to the fourth is continuous everywhere. Sine is continuous everywhere, yes. So now I notice that the interval is symmetric. Very good. I will immediately ask myself if this is odd or even. So if it is odd, the answer will automatically be zero. Perfect. If it's even, it's twice from zero to pi over three from the same function. I really hope it's odd. Is it odd? Yes, because negative x to the fourth sine and negative x, this will not change, will still be x to the fourth, but this, I know it's an odd function. So it will be negative sine x, which means the function is odd, not even, and the answer is 0. But I have to mention in writing, function is odd, and the interval is symmetric. Therefore, the integral is 0. So odd function and symmetric interval. Therefore, the answer is 0. Very good. Please feel free to choose anything else. And then section 5.5 .5 is complete. But I still would like to go back. Can we still work on some of these? Yes, of course. Anything. 53 through 73. Six, three, three. 63, I see it. Okay, the integral from 0 to 13 from dx over the cube root of 1 plus 2x everything squared. Is this function uh, continuous? So 1 plus 2x, positive or negative, under the cube root, it's allowed. What is not allowed is x equals negative 1 half. Because 1 plus 2x, if it's 0, then x is negative 1 half. But that's not the case here. And the cube root exists for anything, any value of x. Good. So then what would you consider denoted, denoting by y? Mm -hmm. So dy equals? Very good. No problem there. I can make up a 2 anytime in my dreams. So this becomes? This becomes to two thirds. Y to two thirds. So now this is one half the integral from y to negative two thirds dy. Stop. I cannot copy the same limits of integration. Okay. One, two. So yes, five, when x is zero, five, exactly. So this will be. I agree. And don't look back. There is no point in looking back in definite integrals. Do you want to plug in here? No. Right? So this is 1 half y to negative 2 thirds plus 1, which is 1 third over 1 third from 1 to 27. Or when I flip, I get 3 halves. The cube root of y from 1 to 27. Which is, uh, I have to add 1. So 
the integral from x to the n, the, the x is x to n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus a constant c. So y to a power, it has to be y to that power plus 1. So negative 2 thirds plus 1 is 1 third over n plus 1, which is 1 th negative 2 thirds plus 1. Is that okay? So maybe I should have written it as y to negative 2 thirds plus 1 over negative 2 thirds plus 1. And that's how we get the power 1 third from here and the bottom 1 third. Better? So then this is 3 halves. How much is the cube root of 27? How much is the cube root of 1? How much is 3 minus 1 times 3 halves? So I hope I convinced you not to go back in the definite integral. There is no need. The number will be the same, but if you go back, you will be plugging in a more sophisticated function than the simple one that we came up with. Will you get the same answer? Yes. OK, are we done with the substitution rule for definite and indefinite for now? Yes, of course. Yes, just for you. Just kidding. Kidding. I'm kidding. You, uh, which one? Which one? 59. 59. I, as I said, I, I talk too much. So the integral from 1 to 2. Is it 1 to 2? Yes, it is. e to 1 half over x squared dx. Am I cor correct? Very good. And I know you are going to say, I don't like 1 half inside e to the x. We don't want e. Yes. Right. So I'm going to say let y be 1 over x. Now remember, I said a long time ago, please remember what is the derivative of 1 over x. It's very useful. But with minus in front. Yes, it is. So then, there is no problem here at all multiplying by negative 1 twice. I'm not changing anything. But what does this become? What does this become? Do not copy the same limits of integration. So this is e to y dy, which is way more human than this one. I hope you agree. Now, when x is 1, when x is 2, so this is negative e to y from 1 to 1 half. Very elegant. I will say negative the square root of e minus e. e to 1 half is the square root of e. And when I plug in 1, you can reverse them and distribute negative 1. OK, you think that we are done with this? Yes? Yes? Say it again. So I guess the question I have is about the negative. Which negative? How you multiply inside and outside? No, I multiplied twice by negative 1. So it's not inside and outside. They're both outside, but I can put it inside. It's a constant. Or you can take it from here in front. It's a limit. So it doesn't matter where I put it. But I multiply by negative 1 twice, which gives me 1. But I needed the negative with x squared and dx because otherwise I can make up make up a dy. Oh, I see. And the other negative is left outside. Yes, because I need it. I can't change. Right. So multiplying by negative 1 twice doesn't change anything. Right. But I still have to carry the other one. I'm using one, but the other one stays. Very good. Any questions? 
Any questions? Okay, so uh, we have a little piece to go back to on page 404. And I'm trying to find an example. And yes, I did find it on page 405. Okay, problems 59 and 60. So let's look at 59. Uh, page 405. Okay, we're given V of T. What is this, V of T? Very good. We're given t between 0 and 3. And we're asked two things. Part A, find the displacement. This is a function. It's s of t. s of t, so we're asked to find the integral from v of t dt. That is not a problem. I stopped denoting my pages and then 13. So s of t is the integral from 3t minus 5 dt. And of course, it will be a number or a function. function. Of course, it's an indefinite integral. So this is 3t squared over 2 minus 5t plus a constant c. We have t squared minus 5t plus a constant c. In part b, however, we're asked to find the distance traveled by the particle during the given time interval, 0 and 3. So the distance covered by the particle between 0 and 3. So this is the total distance, which is the integral from 0 to 3, from the absolute value of v of t dt. Now, can anyone, we've done this before, can anyone say why we put the absolute value? And we did this absolute value. We put, it doesn't matter which way it's going. It's exactly. Still exactly. We're still adding distance. If the particle goes in, pos in the positive direction when the velocity is positive, or it goes to uh, the negative direction where the velocity is Cor Correct. Awesome. That's it. So this is the total distance. So this will be the integral from 0 to 3 from 3t minus 5 dt in absolute value. I can't determine this before I find 3t minus 5 in absolute value. And that's why we do a lot of these things in pre-calc. That's another example of why, another application. So I know it's 3t minus 5 if, or negative 3t plus 5 if. If what? And that's if important. Minus if 5 is if greater than 0. And Correct. And the other one, the rest. Than, yeah. Perfect. So if t greater than or equal to 5 thirds, and if t less than 5 thirds, indeed. Well done. But then this means that I have a sum of two integrals. One integral applied to a one function between a certain limits of integration, and another integral of a different function between other limits of integration. I do have to worry about that, and I have to calculate both. Correct? So, from Zero. perfect to very good. From which function? From which function? Very good. 
last till very good from which function that's it then you will have only one integral if that's the case so this function is this integral is between 0 and 3 none of these functions is between 0 and 3 so so 0 to 5 thirds less than 5 thirds between 0 and 5 thirds is from this and between 5 thirds and 3 is from the other function better okay so then the total distance equals negative 3t squared over 2 plus 5t from 0 to 5 thirds plus 3t squared over 2 minus 5t from 5 thirds to 3. Two integrals that we need to calculate. So you only need to do that because uh, the velocity goes from negative to positive, right? Uh, uh, say it again. Um, you only need to do that because the velocity goes from negative to positive. From because it could. I don't know what the particle is doing, right? Actually, I do. So if you graph this function between 0 and 3, you will see it crosses at 5 thirds. So it's negative on one side of 5 thirds and it's positive on the other side of 5 thirds. So in order to integrate and find the distance, I have to find the integral from the first between um, 0 and 5 thirds and the other one between 5 thirds and 3 because it's above the x-axis. So if you knew that it was positive from 0 to 3, could you just do, just do 1? Correct. Okay. Correct. Well, um, yes. How are you getting negative? What function prime is negative 3? t is negative 3 over 2 or negative 3 t squared over 2. What function prime is 5? Bless you. Is 5 t. What function prime is 3 t? 3 t squared over 2. What function prime is negative 5? 5 t. We are integrating. Better? Okay. So now I plug in 5 thirds. So I have negative 3 halves times 5 thirds squared plus 5 times 5 thirds. I'm happy I don't have to plug in 0 because it's 0. Plus 3 times 9 over 2 minus 15, but minus when I plug in 5 thirds. Careful. 3 halves times 5 thirds squared minus 5 times 5 thirds. Maybe I should use a bracket here. Say it again. Why are you using the bracket there? Because uh, when I plug in 3, I get this. Minus. Uh, okay. I don't want to forget to distribute. When I plug in 5 thirds, I have to distribute this negative sign to both. Okay, so let's see what we have. Negative 3 halves, this is 25 over 9. Plus 25 over 3. Minus 27. Plus, I'm sorry. Um, plus 27 halves minus 15 minus 3 halves times 25 over 9 and now plus uh, 25 over 3 and of course nothing goes away don't expect that to happen okay so um, I'll simplify so I have negative 25 over 6 minus 25 over 6 is negative 50 over 6. Okay. Now plus 50 over 3 plus 27 over 2 minus 15. Okay, I can simplify by 2. I don't want to simplify because I, uh, if I simplify, it's still the 6 at least common denominator. Let's not mess with it. doesn't matter. So negative 50 times 2 times 3 
and times 6. Um, is it still 80? Um, no, it's 90. Yeah. That's what I said. Is it still... Sorry. I, was, I don't know what I was multiplying. And I said, no, that's not right. Okay, so this is 50, and this is uh, minus 9, right? So is it 41 sixth? Yeah, let's see. So this is 50, and this is minus 9, correct? Negative 90 plus 81 is minus 9. 50 minus 9 is 41. So the total distance covered by this particle between 0 and 3 is 41 over 6. Any questions? Can I do another one? Sure. Just to integrate a linear function? Let's let's we'll come back. We'll look at another example in a minute. Yes. Paul? What did I do? We didn't have the unit. Oh, what was the unit? My apologies. And I always mention that to you. Don't forget the measurement unit. Don't forget the measurement unit. And I did. OK. I would like now to go back for a second or two, back to the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. Ready? I'm sorry? Um, it's still in the section uh, 5.3. So back to... Uh, no, there is one type of example that I didn't get the chance to show. What did we say about differentiation and integration? They are inverse operations. So if I differentiate an integral, I get the function. If I, diff if I integrate a derivative, I get the function. Okay? Good. So let's take a look at an interval between a and b. And here's a function, f of x. Is this function continuous on the interval a comma b? Very good. What does this represent? It represents the area under the graph of the function f of x between a and b. Agreed? Yes? Which is always what? Nico, you wanted something? Uh, it's still chapter 5, but um, we are looking at one little piece that I did not get the chance to get, show examples about. So this is a continuous function on the interval a comma b. If I want to determine the area, I will calculate um, the integral from a to b from f of x dx, not the limit of the Riemann sum, unless it's linear, quadratic, or cubic, because I'm limited there. OK. So now here is another scenario. I'm going to call this function f of t. Do you mind if it's f of x or no? Of course not. Doesn't matter.